Now, how do you feel about children being granted places in school based on their religion? The Oireachtas Education Committee has recently extended the deadline for public consultation on the matter to Monday, March 20th. Joining us to discuss are Seamus Paul Conroy, General Secretary of the Catholic Primary School Management Association, and Jane Donnelly, Human Rights Officer with Atheist Ireland. You're both very welcome to the programme. Seamus, in this day and age, is it not appropriate that religion should be removed from the ethos of schools and perhaps if you are of a religious bent to have that taught at an appropriate time during the school day but not for it to be the dominating factor in the school's ethos? Well firstly there is a huge demand for Catholic education not just in Ireland but internationally so I think the idea that you would remove the eth religious ethos from schools is contrary to what people actually want and it's not just by the way Catholic it's also Church of Ireland Presbyterian, Jewish and Muslim. There are a lot of us who want to bring up our children in the faith schools and want to have the right to do so, but that doesn't mean that we want to keep anybody else out of faith schools. There's a common misconception out there at the moment that you have to be baptised to get into a Catholic school. That is not the case. Well, we've heard many cases where people who haven't been baptised have been, and when you're on your own surveys indeed, where people haven't been baptised, 96 pupils refused admission because they weren't baptised. Not 96 pupils. There were 7,500 unsuccessful applications in Dublin last year for places in Catholic schools. 1.2% of those applications were from people who were unbaptised. That means there are an awful lot of people who are baptised who are not getting into schools. The real problem isn't religion, it's resources. The real barrier isn't baptism, it's a lack of buildings. In some areas of the city, there just aren't enough school places. Yes, but there are, be, there are schools being built, you know, uh, quite a lot of them, 2015-2016, Goatstown, Cabra, Drumcondra, Greystone. So that side of things is being addressed in a school building program, but um, we, 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 we'll take your point. Jane, um, is what Seamus says not fair enough in that you... If a lot of people in Ireland do want their kids to be educated in a faith-based school. Uh, a lot of people do, but a lot there's other people that do not want it. But you have to understand that the state couldn't possibly fund a religious education for every different faith in the country. There are over 126 different religions in Ireland. Now we're not going to have a school for every one of those in every town and village in Ireland. So what do you do? You have the basis of a school system that's based on respect, inclusion, diversity, and freedom from discrimination, and in particular, freedom from religious discrimination. And the only way to do that is true, I believe, is the secular school system. Now, we have a situation in Ireland where we have a piece of legislation that says that children that are of a certain religion can get access to their local school before children of n not of that religion. But there's also a second part of that piece of legislation that says that you can refuse access to a five-year-old if that five-year-old is going to undermine the ethos of the school. Now, most children in an area go to play school together. And when it comes to going to primary school, we come hit this wall that they can't get access to their local primary school, publicly funded national school, um, in some cases without uh, producing a baptismal certificate. Now I know not all schools uh, have this problem, but in the constitution, there's an article in the constitution, there are conditions to the public funding of schools and schools with a Catholic ethos. And that is that all children can attend them and they can opt out of religion. Now, as the years have gone by, they've introduced discrimination into that. So, uh, um, preference is give, given to, say, Catholic children's, children in schools that have a Catholic ethos. Now, for somebody like myself that's an atheist, there's 96 of the primary schools in the country are religious, of one religion 96%. or another. 96% of them, there's 3,200 schools. I think there's 81 of those are educate together. So does, doesn't that, Seamus, raise a, a very difficult uh, point in that many people have heard of marriages in the, in the recent years have been outside of any, any faith, so no faith involved. So therefore you would think the children of those people are not going to want 96% of the schools to be of any ethos. That's not fully accurate. A third of marriages in Ireland were non-faith based. 
but 12% of marriages were to people who actually weren't going to live in the country. So I think you have to kind of oh, take oh, those oh, figures okay, out. Okay, but let's yeah, move through yeah. that and on, onto the, the substantive if, point. If we, get, if we get onto the substantive point, the only time that we refuse a child entry to a school is where there is oversubscription. Now, you can't just look at the Catholic school in that area. It's also oversubscription in other schools. So, for example, Kitty Holland had an article recently where she talked about her own difficulty about getting her child into a school. What it revealed was the Catholic school in her area was oversubscribed. So was the Protestant school. But the, edu or sorry, the non denominational school and the Gales school on it were also oversubscribed, but they were taking people from outside the catchment area. So that's putting pressure on our schools. Okay, and so it, is, it is to protect the rights of a Catholic child to Catholic education that we would like to be able, in rare circumstances, to prioritise. Okay, so the, 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 there's municipal forward four uh, ideas. Two of them seem to be gaining the, the most traction, so we look at those. Banning religious schools from giving preference to children of their own religion from outside the catchment area ahead of non-religious children who live inside the catchment area. That's number one. And the fourth one, which is the one I believe, Jane, that Atheist Ireland would be, is interested in, um, it's assessed to introduce an outright ban on religion being used as a factor in admissions. With such approach, she says, religious schools could have the capacity to require parents or students to indicate support or respect for the school ethos. Well, we believe that would be actually to ask parents to um, sign a document saying that they support the ethos. That would be unconstitutional. We really believe that, and it also would be a breach of human rights. Okay, now, Jane, the, 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 what we have here is, and it would appear, even the way you're sitting on, on the couch, you're very far apart know, in, your, in your way of thinking at the moment, right? <laughs> where, where, does the, where does the middle ground line this? How can we reach an accommodation? There's no middle ground with rights, with human rights. There's no bit of human rights. So you cannot say to a child, you can't come into this school because your parents didn't get you baptised or we're giving preference to co-religionists. It, it's a basic human right to have, okay. have access Can to I your local a, school without discrimination. Okay. Can I make a fundamental point? Yeah. When I look at this, I don't actually see a religious issue, I see a resource issue. And there is one very interesting statistic. The Edmund Rice Trust runs 32 schools. They are almost all in, they're almost all Desh schools, and they all have a focus on, se on special needs. None of them is oversubscribed. There is something going on in Dublin that has nothing to do with religion and has a lot to do with middle class aspirations. Let me ask you one final question. Jim. Look, why is it since 2012 when the, the, the policy was introduced about divestment of, of, of religious um, run schools that that has happened at a snail's pace? Why is divestment being so slow? Because it is massively unpopular with local communities. I have spoken to people who told me about priests who were told, if you try and divest our school, we'll divest your collection of light. And what do you think of that, Jane? Is that, is that the case? I don't think so. It, it, the, the fact of the matter is that parents like myself, we don't want Catholic ed education. We're not Catholics. And our national school is run uh, uh, by pa a patron body that is the Catholic Church. We want um, a human rights based education for our children. Okay. Human, rights, human rights are fundamental, but remember, we're not the only ones. There are also Protestant schools. And they discriminate need, against other who minorities. They need to be able to prioritise. Or they will. There's okay. okay. I'm, afra I'm afraid we are we are out of time. But thank you, Seamus. Thank you, Jane, for coming in to us this morning. Up next.